Welcome to Living with Victory Ministries podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Teague's Grocery and Corner Cafe at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. In a moment, Lorene and Tony Giorgio. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep looking up and grab your umbrella, get ready to sing in the Hi, this is Tony Giorgio. Welcome to another edition of Living with Victory. And now, without further delay, I want to introduce my wonderful sidekick, Laureen, who has the scripture and the topic for the day. Hi there. Hi, I'm so glad to be here today talking about perseverance. Oy vey. I and mean, yes. <laughs> this is Psalm 5110. David is praying this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, persevering, and steadfast spirit within me. Matthew Henry's commentary explains, uh, you know, David had been running from Saul, and all of the feelings that would go with that situation, like anger, resentment, revenge, he knew he had to change his way of thinking and his heart, so he prayed for a clean heart and for God to renew a right spirit within him. Repair the decays of my spiritual strength, he prayed. Renew a constant spirit within me. David discovered much inconsistency and much inconstancy within himself. He prays, Lord, fix me for the time to come that I may never in like manner depart from thee. The word inconsistency is incoherent or illogical in thought or actions. Inconstant is lacking firmness or steadiness as in purpose or devotion. Steadfast means firm in belief, determination, and persevere to persist in an undertaking in spite of counter-influences, opposition, or discouragement. And when we're going through trials, you have to ask yourself, where do I fit? Do I need to go before God as David did and say, give me a clean heart? Probably on a daily basis the way we do after, what, 49 years. We all have to do it. We're all in storms, and especially today, oh, there's so much bombarding us, you know, and against the churches and against us as Christians that this spiritual perseverance is so important. And I know what we're going through right now trying to sell a house, trying to downsize, financial craziness, you know, trying to raise money. Ay, they is right again. Boy, I tell you, I tell you wow, well, we're talking about David. That's a, you know. But yeah, we're wearing it on a daily basis. It, it doesn't stop. My utmost for his highest, February 22nd, says the call to spiritual perseverance is not to hang on and do nothing but to work deliberately knowing with certainty that God will never be defeated. That's an important thing. You know, people think, well, I got to persevere. I, I'm getting battered around from all. I've got to pers- I got to keep getting. Well, I've got to hang in there. Who but, are you hanging in there with? And what are you doing along the way? You know, what are we, are we just taking it? Are we getting just martyred and we're not doing something during that storm? There's the difference, you know, to persist in undertaking in spirit of counter influences. Opposition and discouragement means you're still going to do what you're going to do. Exactly. Especially if you know it's right and it's from God. Right. And he will be there to heal the wounds. And it says also in my utmost that the greatest stress in life is the stress of waiting for God because God does have a timing. (laughs) And he won't budge a second sooner. 
and we have to get in step with him. But he does bring fulfillment because you have kept my commandment to persevere. Just a little quickie with the house. You know, we're trying to sell, trying to downsize. It's too expensive. We're trying everything we can to get out from under. And it has been a couple of years that we've been trying to do things to get things together financially and get get out of the house and all of that. But there's always something that comes along that you have to jump over. There's always these hurdles There's always these storms that come. I mean, here we were in the midst of changing programming. And what happens? I come down with bronchitis almost overnight. That leveled me for five weeks. Okay, persevere now. Yeah, you know. (laughs) And we don't have a big staff. You know, it's not thing. Okay, let my staff do it. Well, it don't work that way with us. We're mom and pop. Literally. What is amazing, though, to us is that when we choose to trust God and stay close to him, you have to stay close to him. You can't let a day go by or even throughout the day not talk to him because life is hard. It is hard. You, You know, you get attacked from so many different ends and so many different sides, everything coming at you at one time. That you need to know that you can stand on that rock and you're secure. This is a message that we need just about every day because we could get discouraged so quickly. That's why we have to go to God because when we seek him and we're persevering towards him and asking him to give us a clean heart and to change our way of thinking, he has already put that within us. But if we're not using what he put in us that we have received because he died on the cross and and keep that personal relationship active and, and really be close to him, you cannot go through these trials in peace taking everything that's happening with us with the house and and with being sick because after I got sick Lauren got sick my nephew got sick we, we're all you know it was like having you know a hospital within the house here <laughs> so it, and it gets to you because you say I'm in my 70s what am I doing here I I'm, I've got all of this going on why you know why should I bother you get tired you get annoyed you know I'm sick I can't do what I have to do why, why am I bothering, you know? Then I think of, and everybody reminds me of Abraham, you know, Methuselah. I think they're trying to tell me something, you know? <laughs> so age isn't a factor, but the devil brings it into my head. You, you know, you're getting old, man. You don't, you don't need to be doing this. You don't have to take this. You can just sit outside on your rocker. I don't care how old we become. God can use you even if you could only move one finger or just talk or pick up the phone to encourage someone. And Satan knows that. And he tries to make you feel you're of no value. Exactly. But if we persevere, spiritually persevere and do it with God, we are so valuable that we make him shake. And that's what our... (laughs) Yeah. Goal should be to make him <laughs> make shake. Him shake. And if you want to give him a black guy, persevere. He needles at you and the smallest thing and makes it so big when it really isn't. If you step back and, and you let God's spirit fill you, if you let the Holy Spirit come in, you're going to see things in a different perspective. Let's put it this way. He knows the end of the book, and he knows who wins. And it isn't Satan who's going to win. So keep that in mind. Be filled. Don't be afraid. Be filled. I don't care who you are, what you're going through. Be filled. Revelation 3, 10, and 12. Because you have guarded and kept my word of patient endurance, have held fast the lesson of my patience with the expectant endurance that I give you, I also will keep you safe from the hour of trial, testing, which is coming to the whole world, and to try those who dwell upon the earth. Now, here's the best part. He who overcomes is victorious. 
I will make him a pillar in the sanctuary of my God. He shall never be put out of it or go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which descends from my God out of heaven and my own new name. Now, I don't know about you, but that excites me. If anything is going to give me the want to keep persevering, it's those verses. Because remember, it's not all about here. This is temporary. There is the greater life, the everlasting life. That's what we're all striving for. It's not this. It's not about this house that's going to just decay and fall apart. Nothing but his love and his mercy and his grace is something that is everlasting until we see him face to face. He's going to keep us up as long as we have that spiritual perseverance. And that spiritual perseverance comes with what Jesus promised. Peace, joy, right? love, patience, Oh yes, self-control. He has given us everything. They are the fruit of the Spirit. Spiritual perseverance is more powerful, much more powerful than just perseverance because you're doing it with him and everything that he has already provided for you. Just to bring you back just to a little bit of what, what is going on, you, you know, with us and the house and the finances and all of this. And we had a mortgage that, that was interest only, and then they were going to add the principal. Well, adding the principal, it's been 14 years, huh? but it came up a lot faster than what it should have. And with the economy the way it was, anyway, it won't go into the whole thing. We weren't going to be able to handle it because on fixed income, <laughs> believe me, fixed income, that's it. We're, we're not drawing paychecks, none of that. So... We had X amount of dollars, even though there was going to be an increase. Well, the increase was horrendous. I mean, the the principal alone on that that second mortgage went up by five hundred dollars a month, and we, me more than she, was going. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're going to lose the house. I don't know where that. And then, you know, started thinking, okay, where's that faith? Where's that perseverance? You're telling everybody persevere. You're telling everybody. When you do that, and I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> reprimanding That's you. That's okay. You can smack me. Do right. That's okay. I don't care. Yeah. But when we do that, we're telling God, we don't trust you. You can't handle my problem. Exactly. It's too exactly. big. Exactly. You. Yeah, you don't, you, you don't know what's going on. It. Right. And that's my trouble and sometimes. And that's where we get into trouble. Exactly. I'll take care of it. So what you have to ask yourself when you're going through something, am I being inconstant and inconsistent? Or am I persevering and being steadfast? Where are you right now in your trial that you're going through? Do you have work to do to bring yourself out of that? Once I calmed down, put my feet on the ground and said, you know, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I realize you're there and you've been with me for a long time and got me out of a lot of messes. We both just prayed and believe it or not, thanks to my wonderful sidekick over here, we have had enough cuts in in the budget that we are able to manage that mortgage right now until we sell this house. Only by the grace of God, only by the fact that persevere and use him with you to make your decisions. I would have never thought, I mean, are you kidding? Where are we going to pull more money? Hair stupid, you don't need cable, do you? Oh, gee, there's $80 of it. Oh, I didn't know that. You see, it's there, but when you panic, you can't see the forest for the trees. There are times when I, I'll be feel so overwhelmed by all that we have to do. And when I just say, Lord, I'm putting this in your hands. You take care of the situation. Show me what to do. And then I'll look back at the end of the day and say, well, I got everything done. How'd can't that believe happen? I did that. You know, and, and, it's, and it's, you know paraphrasing when, when when Jesus was in the garden man he didn't want to go through that mess and that that torture you know take the mm -hmm. cup he, he didn't want it but then it was it's your will father 
not mine. Let your will be done. And if we'd only think of that, he knows the outcome. He wouldn't put you through anything. Our steps are ordered of him. So he knows the way out before we get even get into it. And then you look at it and you say, why did I worry? I mean, why? I mean, we're no worse off. You know, right now we're doing fine. We're doing fine. There are some things we don't have, but we don't need. I don't need cable TV. Remember, Jesus never quit. And we do have a choice to receive what he has given us through his death on the cross and uh, use what he has given us to fight our trials as we're going through them. We can either be victims or we can be warriors. But I believe he has made us warriors. And sometimes we just sit back and act like we have nothing to fight back with. But we do. We have peace. Sure. We have faith. We have hope. All of these are our weapons. Sure, exactly. You know, and uh, we do not have to play the victim. We are God's warriors, and that's what he wants us to be. He wants us to stand up, square our shoulders back, and fight and be his representative. Christ was not a victim. No. He chose to go to the cross. He chose to stay on that cross. He could have come down. Exactly. But he chose to stay on that cross for us. Now it's our turn to go through our trials as he went through his in a manly way and be examples with a smile on our face That's right. to others watching us going through those trials because you don't know how you live your life and you go through your trials what a difference it makes to somebody else who's going through a That's trial right. and how Watching to go you. through yes. it. You yes. cannot quote scripture if you're not going to do what Christ said to do <laughs> as you go through right. your trial. Yeah, don't, yeah, you know, it's like, don't, don't do what I do, do what I say. Exactly. Well, it, you know, actions are where it's at. In this day, we do need our spiritual armor. It's coming down to that. We need the spiritual armor because Satan is really trying to grab us Christians without a doubt. And we're on the spotlight. And we need to show them that we've got more than they think we have. We have to be God's representatives. Sometimes we act like we don't even know who he is because we're so busy into ourselves. Right, right. So just remember persevering, all right? Hey, just a reminder for you, Living with Victory Ministries' mission is to bring hope and encouragement through God's Word to people that are hurting and going through storms. We want to give hope and encouragement in a physical way as well as spiritually. To that end, we have three community outreaches that we are addressing and hope to add a fourth very soon. The first one, you are hearing our radio ministry. We bring you our experiences of how we learned to trust God throughout the challenges and storms we have had over the last 50 years. We hope they help you to apply what the Word says to get you through your challenges and storms, too. Two of the outreaches came about when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Sitting in the waiting room with the men and women waiting for their chemo and radiation treatments, I noticed a sense of hopelessness and fear on their faces that broke my heart. I was feeling such peace knowing that God was in control and that no matter what the outcome, I was going to be fine. I felt a compelling need to do something. I made two Test of Faith CDs And with my doctor's permission, I put them in Hope Women's Cancer Center, hoping to encourage the people waiting for the doctor and having to go through this process of cancer. We have given approximately 1,500 CDs away so far. God has healed me and kept me here, I believe, so that I can tell what he showed me about his love and faithfulness. You know, the other outreach that Lauren is talking about also came about while going to the hospital, and it's called Fuel for Life. And this concerns families who have seriously ill children 
and who need daily treatments as outpatients. Sadly, what they term the working poor families have to make the decision to feed their family or put gas in the car to bring the child to his or her treatment. Because they are working, they receive no financial aid for transportation from any state or federal or local agency. Without these timely treatments, children will die. We purchase gas cards in the increments of $25, and the social workers determine the neediest of the patients. And they also are given to East Tennessee Children's Hospital in Knoxville. And we also assist at Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital in Orlando. We're not supported by a large ministry. We are supported by you, the community, and listeners like you. And we hope that you want to share our enthusiasm for the help we are giving as Jesus commanded. And no one is exempt from storms. Remember that. So each of us has the possibility of falling through the cracks. Donations in any amount would be appreciated. Later on, our announcer will let you know where to send them. And we thank you for giving to the less fortunate and to helping this grassroots ministry in the past. You can become a Living with Victory Ministries patron with a monthly donation of $5 or more. Simply go to livingwithvictory.podbean.com. That's livingwithvictory.podbean.com. And click on the PayPal button. Thanks for listening. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening.